The Civil War did not just bring turmoil in North Carolina during the war, but brought many tragic ramifications after. These events in the aftermath of the Civil War and into Reconstruction continued a legacy still felt to this day. One such event was the Kirk Holden War, which took place in 1870. Prior to these events, a hate group was formed from former Confederates in Tennessee in the end of 1865, the same year the war ended. This was the KKK or Ku Klux Klan, which had white supremacy at the forefront of its principles. They began as a small group, but quickly rose in prominence in the South, eventually making its way to North Carolina in 1868. The KKK became known for violence and causing oppression to African Americans or a whites deemed to be in support of African Americans. On the evening of February 26, 1870, a notable African American, White Outlaw was murdered at here in Alamance County. This set a catalyst for the events that would transpire. The governor at the time was a Republican named Kirk Holden. Governor Holden's first attempts to stop the violence were not successful. A lot of the police who were intended to fight the Ku Klux Klan instead found themselves sympathizing with their cause. In addition, many members of the Ku Klux Klan were jailed, or to be released shortly after. Governor Holden was disappointed at the violence occurring, but with the help of Senator Schaffner passed legislation declaring a state of emergency on March 7, 1870. This also included the suspension of Habby's corpus until otherwise notified. Governor Holden soon organized a militia of men composed of those in western North Carolina all the way to men in Virginia. One of the militia groups formed was Company H, which in its ranks had African Americans led by George W. Kirk. The men he led marched gallantly through Volumans and Caswell counties, arresting those suspected of violence. However, there were a few who managed to flee the scene. Those arrested included many common folk and farmers. One notable arrest was former Congressman Joan Kerr, Jr. This so-called war only lasted four months with no deaths or injuries. After the arrests, the situation lingered in courts due to the arrested Klansmen appealing to the state courts. The courts would then issue a writ that stated the removal of Hebby's corpus was unconstitutional. Not giving up at this point, Governor Holden ignored the writ given, but would be given another by the United States Supreme Court. The final blow was when President Grant issued a statement to Governor Holden that he wouldn't provide assistance to the governor. The following election, Democrats would make sweeping gains across the state. With these political gains, articles of impeachment were issued at Governor Holden because of his actions during the Kirk Holden War. He was ultimately found guilty and became the first United States governor to be removed from office. Nearly all the Klansmen convicted will be set free soon after, but the Ku Klux Klan will decline in permanence over the next few decades. The end of oppression to African Americans will not end here though. The democratic dominance will bring the state to follow in the footsteps of other southern states. With laws intended to strip African Americans of their rights, African Americans will face setbacks that will continue for years to come. The lost cause will also have its grip on the Kirk Holden War. Many Southerners will see the event as Northern oppression. It is important to remember the sacrifice of not only the Civil War, but the events that occurred after. The Kirk Holden War brought hate and violence. But it is also important to note the freedoms that were won and the role of African Americans had in their own freedom.